I saw him run up the boards once with his toe picks. You know, what? I, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty wild. And welcome back to that figure skating show. We are here for our men's recap from the International de France. Who topped the podium, Mr. Dylan? Well, as predicted, uh, we are on a roll. We did it, um, we did that. Yeah, 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 yeah. In first place, from Japan, Yuma Kageyama. In second place, also from Japan, Shun Sato. And in third place, from the United States, Jason Brown. So let's get into Yuma Kageyama, reigning silver world medalist, his second Grand Prix win this season. Uh, of course, coming back from that legendary rise from hell uh, in the, his last Grand Prix to first place. Uh, does it here, winning both segments of the competition. Not super clean here in the free or the short, but a good mix uh, to keep him in first place by 22 points. <laughs> Just a tight margin. You know, nail biter. Now, very much solidifying his presence as Olympic medal contender, potentially. He's relatively new to the scene. He just came out of not nowhere, but obviously somewhere. How does he stack up against uh, Nathan and Vincent? And of course, we haven't seen Yuzu yet, so we can't really compare uh, right now. But uh, heading into the final, how, do they, how does he look compared to the top men there? Well, here's what I think about Kageyama. He's super fast. Uh, his jumps are enormous, and he's generally very consistent. He doesn't have the same firepower as Nathan or Vincent, um, you know, going into this final. He does have a lot of GOEs on the quads he does, the sow and toe. He doesn't have a loop of flip or lutz in his program right now. But I do find his face is deadpan when he skates. Mm -hmm. He does emote with his body. There is intentionality. Uh, you know, in his movements to the music, but I do find he's not really invested yet. That's another thing that's gonna keep him from kind of reaching Nathan. Nathan has really grown over the years and his artistry has exploded. That mixed with, you know, his his like five, six quad long program. I don't know that Yuma will be able to reach him. I do think Yuma is um, a huge candidate for being on the podium at the mm -hmm. Grand Prix final. Ditto to everything you just said. He's posted uh, good scores. He's competitive with them. I think uh, uh, we would be amiss to say that he's not going to, uh, you know, medal. Also, I forgot to mention Shoma Uno's in there as well with his quad loops and quad flips. So it's uh, oh, a yeah. countryman he's got to contest a medal for. So that's four strong competitors for a medal finish at this Grand Prix final. Second place, uh, his teammate uh, Shun Sato with a silver um, first Grand Prix medal of his career actually a junior world record holder he did have his first Grand Prix at Skate America but was dealing with a dislocated shoulder still competed there was able to finish fourth his jumps are crazy <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean that's kind of a theme when we're talking about these Japanese skaters especially <laughs> these young guys coming up I I, I don't know how, how. <laughs> They do it. <laughs> what he, they're doing. I don't it's know. Like they have he seagull opens bones. Their bones are hollow, I think. They have no weight. It's unbelievable. <laughs> like, how? Uh, You're I defying don't. physics, sir. <laughs> I don't know. He's opening up early in that quad lutz, literally. I mean, just so he has room for a quid. His quads look like triples to me. Opening with what was a quite <laughs> spectacular <laughs> quad lutz. When quad popped up on the screen, I'm like, Were are you sure? I had to like go back and watch <laughs> it. I'm like, oh yeah, that I demand a review. It. His skating skills, uh, of course, need to be developed very uh, a, a lot more compared to everybody else on top of it. But another potential Olympic hopeful for Japan. Yeah, if, if Yuzu is still injured, uh, this kid could be going to the games, um, yeah. which is pretty wild. You know, to look at the depth in Japan, the fact that the the four of the they're kind of like the Russian women at this point. It's Nationals is like the most stressful time of the year for them. It's unbelievable. <laughs> and just behind him, on the flip side of things, not the most uh, dangerous jumper in terms of the difficulty that he has in his program, but in my opinion, probably the most talented and beautiful skater maybe of all the events in the world right now is Jason Brown for the United States. Just 
such a gift on the ice. Um, we talk about it every time because it's just, it's still staggering every time you see it. Second Grand Prix medal of the season. He came second at Skate Canada, bronze here in France. Um, he was just 0 0.8 points away from second here. Yes, and you know what? He landed his quad sal in the free program, a little bit two-footed, but I think it may be the first time that he's got a fully rotated, no cues, quad sal on uh, his, on his um, protocol sheet. Uh, I'm sure someone is in the comments going to let me know if I am sure about that. But he's a unique once in a lifetime skater and it's and yeah, he may not be uh, a chance for an Olympic medal, but we love and appreciate him anytime he's on the ice. Yeah, I, I would I would contribute to get one made for him. <laughs> and uh, and a shout out to our lone Canadian Keegan Messing, who finished sixth, uh, fifth after Skate Canada. Much better showing here, season's best, but you know, definitely not looking at in his top form yet. It's tense in Canada with those two spots for the men, you know, with also Roman Sadovsky and Nam Nguyen looking for uh, those spots. So no one really looking like they are in top form yet to grab those two Olympic spots in Canada. Yep, of course, we will see Roman next week at Ross Telecom Cup. We'll see how he can stack up. Let's see if he has a better showing here as well to put himself into that running. But again, like you said, Canadian men not really setting themselves apart as an obvious choice right now. But again, I think uh, uh, Keegan with this score uh, so far, well, well, well the highest of any Canadian men we've seen on the Grand Prix circuit. I honestly also don't know how he saves some of these jumps, like at all. <laughs> like, I don't get it. How are your knees? Like that strong, like Megan the Stallion strong. I don't know. Like it's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> He's built but, different. I saw him run up the boards once with his Topex. You know, I, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty wild. <laughs> he was doing a he was doing an exhibition program and he just like went duh, 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 and stood on the boards. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> did I just see that? Did that happen? That happened. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, everybody, that is our recap for the men's event here at the International de France. I keep saying here like we are there. We're never going to be on location anywhere. Forever stuck here. They aren't feeding me. Please send help. I'm kidding. Uh, let us know how you think about the men's event here at uh, in France, uh, how you think uh, Yuma will do compared to all the other top men heading into the final, and uh, your face for the podium. And make sure you subscribe and like and do all those wonderful things to support our show. And keep an eye out for our other segments from the other events here at the International de France. Merci beaucoup. Hey guys, it's Asher and Dylan from That Figure Skating Show. And if you like this video, and don't lie, we know you did, there's actually more where that came from. So subscribe to CBC Sports and click it. Click it real good. Da, na, na, uh, 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 uh.